Donors. This is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the Lucky Bastard. You will coming at you live from the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Red Zone. Today, man, we got trade targets, all right? I'm out here trying to survive in the fantasy world, man. And so I am looking at the people's schedules for the next month or so. We got some good schedules. We got some, we got some bad schedules. We got some players that just did well, man. Trade them away. Get what you can out of these people. Trade for some people on the low. All right, we also have... Our smashes and crashes, so, you know, studs, duds, that type of shit. And we also have our news, Jason. But the best part is we've got, uh, what, we got a program, man. Beep, boop, beep, boop, bop. We enter in a couple players. It tells us real-life trades, all right? So shit that's going on right now. So we're going to tell you who to trade for, who to trade away. And we're going to talk about what you have to do to, give the, to get those players, man. So, Jason, before we get into all of that exciting stuff, we need the public to help the show, man. We need help. I'm throwing bottle caps against the wall. Let them know how they can. Is this a is this a drinking episode? No, I just found a bottle cap. Oh. <laughs> I'm the That's only one at work, man. I am the only person at work. I thought that today my boss was there, but hey, I'm just saying I could show up hungover and nobody would know. They didn't want to know. They would just be like, "Man, Tyler's in a bad mood today." Maybe, maybe they think you're in a happy mood because you're not talking as much. <laughs> yeah, prof- I won't be complaining. Right. All right. Uh, where, where am I at? If you guys made it this far and enjoy two friends talking about fantasy football, then please hit the subscribe, press the like. We like the likes. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about the trade targets. If you have any questions about the trade targets, if you have any players that smash, any players that crash, let us know in the comments. We're also on the radio on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We also got a Patreon. Yeah. Best way to support. Uh, like, subscribe. That gets that to more people. And hey, financially, dog. Patreon. Shout out. To our Patreon, subscribe, all two of them. Anyways, hey man, let's get into the news, Jason. There's a game going on right now. I don't have it up because I don't want to be emotionally uh, stressed. I'm relying on a couple players not doing shit this game. So I don't want to be freaking out in the middle of this episode, man. Just lose my thought. First up, man, Daniel Jones clears waivers and ready to sign. Jason, you are the Cowboys fan. I keep on hearing that he's going to go to the Cowboys and play against play against them on, uh, on Thanksgiving. But after watching that last game, dude, I think that uh cooper rush is just as good as as daniel jones i'd be like if i was a cowboys fan i wouldn't want him yeah i mean i don't he's not gonna be a cowboy he's also he also said he only wants to go to a team that's a playoff contender so i know dude but like it was all over the place as soon as that went out they're like cowboys 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 fake news bro this is it's it's dumb they don't even want to uh they didn't want to pay cd lamb they didn't want to pay dak and you think they're going to take on the rest of jones's It was that Reddit hacker, Jason. Remember, he was on. He showed up on the Cowboys' digital roster, man, for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm like, see, and like, I was right too. Like, he can't even. He has to clear uh, waivers before he can even go to a team. So he had like 72 hours yeah, before he can even go, go to a team. Where he's not even a starter, Jason. He's going to be a backup for some, you know, playoff team. Okay. Anyways, Sean Payton. We need to pay attention to this. Told the coaches in a team meeting today he wants to get more touches to Devon Veal. Veal is, I don't think it's Valet or Veal. I don't know. We, we say Veal around here. Veal is on the menu. All right. Say it said same amount. Uh, he said the same about Estime two weeks ago. So who, who the fuck knows? But hey, this guy got 10 targets last game. Bo Nix is balling out. People are going to have to start paying more attention to Sutton if they're not already. So yeah, man, they're looking for the number two there. Jason, I would roll the dice on picking up Veal on waivers. Yeah, it was like, uh, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but it was like the tell of two halves. He was all about the first half. He had everything. I thought he was set up to have an explosive game, but then, you know, second half, it was nothing but court and Sutton. So it's weird. Your volume just went down, I felt like, but it's okay. I don't know. Make sure you're on the same mic, dog. Um, Next up. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, pick up Devon Beal, right? Colts wide receiver Josh Downs, who left uh, Sunday's game with a shoulder injury, is considered week to week and is a long shot to play Sunday against the Patriots. That would have been a sweet matchup. You just saw Tua Tonga Viola take him apart, man. And uh, now you're just looking for good matchups for Josh Downs. It's going to be a roller coaster with Anthony Richardson as the quarterback, but he should still get lead the team in targets. I know it was Michael Pittman this last week, but remember he got injured. So yeah, he did not suffer a major injury, major injury, but he gets a sweet matchup and does not get to play this next week, Jason. Damn, did you say Pittman had a he had an injury? No, I'm talking. I said uh, no, I said Josh Downs. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. I said you. Damn. Hard to hear you, man, because you're you're low on the volume. All right, man, this is big news for the Gardner Minshew's owners. Hey, AOC is back. Jason, I'm not talking about the Congress lady, all right? 
And uh, we're talking about Jacoby Myers getting a bump, maybe getting a bump. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, this is big news for him. Hey, Brock Bowers is getting hyper targeted as well. So I really don't care. I thought I liked Gardner Minshew for the big plays and stuff, the higher ceiling. But he also has a pretty terrible floor as well, dude. So Jacoby Myers is still getting, I think he's got double digit uh, targets for like a month straight. Should continue. I actually like AOC coming back for the Raiders, Jason. Yeah, you know, he's going to be hyper-targeting somebody on that. It's going to be – is it Bowers that's going to get 20? Or is it Myers that's going to get 20? Are they going to split it up? Because, you know, when Devontae Adams are, yeah, was playing, he was, dude, 15, 20 targets a game, man. He didn't give a nope. fuck. I felt – who was – oh, no, it was, it was uh, Jimmy Garoppolo with Jacoby Myers. I was like, wasn't AOC all about Jacoby? No, it was uh, Devontae Adams. Thank God. It was Jimmy G. Yeah, and Jason, his first game back, though, is Friday. It's, they're playing Friday, dude. We got – fucking thursday night we got thursday games we got friday games saturday I, games sunday games it. and they play against the chiefs right yeah so a terrible matchup all right this is actually but hey the chiefs have been giving up points to the tight ends all year so hopefully that will work out and you saw what happened dude uh there was a no name from carolina that just scored a ton of points against kansas city chiefs i've been uh, seeing some stats about kansas city chiefs defense they've been giving up some points lately all right man was it Next uh, up, four- dj moore it was David Moore. Yeah, I know. But it was crazy seeing the stats. And it was all D Moore for Carolina. And I was all, wait a second. What year am I in? <laughs> <sighs> well, and I started DJ Moore that week. And he wasn't doing shit. And I was like, I wish I would have started David Moore. And then DJ Moore came on. <laughs> all right, man. 49ers, QB, Brock Purdy did some light throwing today without issue. So this is like the biggest thing in football, fantasy football right now. Obviously, if he doesn't play... This team is unstartable, man. So we need to pay attention to this. I traded for Debo Samuel, but I traded away Kareem Hunt. I don't know how good of the deal that was now. But, hey, um, yeah. So if you are a anybody but a Kittle owner, Kittle owners, good luck. I told you he was going to be okay. He was okay. But everybody else fucked, Jason. So we need to pay attention to this, including Christian McCaffrey, it seems like. Yeah. Brock Purdy needs to come back. Apparently defenses are not afraid of the 49ers if Brock Purdy is not there. Yeah, I mean, it just shows his value. You got to pay the man. You got to pay him. He's uh, when he's uh, gonna when he sees his nega- his negotiations coming up. He's well. Remember week whatever. Fuck man. And then hey, just a couple people. I can't remember who was on concussion, but Tillman in concussion. But that was an early week. And Dobbs in concussion protocol as well. Jason, um, look for the watch their health throughout the week. Tillman seems like he's not the number one anymore. It's Jerry Judy. So I really don't care about Tillman that much. He's kind of a risky flex play. And Dobbs is uh, Thursday night, so there's a chance I was, he's not going to I was play. wondering if, yeah, I was like, does uh, Green Bay plays then, right? Yeah, I think they do. All right, man. I want to get into trade targets because this means a lot. I got some super cool stuff. Doing some research today, and all the people I wanted to trade for, Jason, actually had good schedules. And the people I wanted to trade away had terrible schedules. So it actually worked out. That works out. Yeah. I, dude, it never does. I, I, I'm sitting there trying to justify these trade targets sometimes with their shitty schedules. But still. So we got to pay attention today, especially with the end of the season coming up. Jason, first off, I would say I want to trade for Calvin Ridley, dog. He's averaging 17 PPR points per game without DeAndre Hopkins. That was like 7.5 with him. But check out his schedule coming up. Washington. Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and then Jacksonville again. So Washington seems like they're beatable. And then you get fucking Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Jacksonville. That takes you through the playoffs. That takes you through the championships. Trade for Calvin Ridley. We talked about how um, um, his schedule was like one of the best, Jason, according to Fantasy Pros, uh, uh, rest of the season schedule. And now it's the rest of the season. So, hey, man, two top five finishes over the last five games. He literally has top five upside, Jason, and now he has the easiest schedule in the world. I'm I'm thinking like three top five, two top five at least in the next five games. So yeah, um, he's gonna win you a week or two coming up. Yeah, I actually tried to uh, trade for this guy two weeks ago, and I was I was shut down pretty hard. It uh it didn't work out for me, Tyler. Just so you know, uh, Calvin Ridley, he is number one in air yards. And he is number one in deep targets. And he's 12th overall in contested catches. So he's running far. They're throwing it far. And he's beating def- defenders catching the ball. 
Uh, yeah, but so I'm just saying, man, Calvin Ridley, trade for him if you can. If you if you don't, if you if you have him, hold on to him, dude. Don't take any trades for him. He's gonna be great. Uh, Jason, tell me what I'd have to give up to get me some Calvin Ridley. Okay, what we got here? Would you do Devon Achan for Calvin Ridley? I'd keep, dude. Achan, this fucking league winner, dude. I'd keep the Achan going. I mean, there's just uh, such a disparity of running backs. So I'm just saying, like, I'm, it's very thin over there in running back world. More wide receivers to, I'd say that, but this was a bad week for wide receivers as well. But yeah, man, I'd, I'd rather have the running back. What about for George Pickens? Oh, I'd trade for George Pickens. I'd be like, hey, actually, I think I had, did I have Pickens on here? We'll look, have to look in a minute. Um, but I would rather have Ridley over Pickens if I could do that. Okay, let's do a combo here. Would you do Calvin Ridley, Jonathan Taylor for Kyron Williams? That's so funny. I've got Kyron on here too. So it's say Jonathan Taylor and Calvin Ridley for T- Kyron Williams. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I think I'd rather keep Jonathan Taylor and yeah, I think I'd rather keep Jonathan Taylor and uh, Calvin Ridley, Jason. Okay. Which is crazy because uh, Kyron is like has the highest snap count ever. All right. So a super high usage. And the next up, Jason, we just talked about him. Jacoby Myers, man, I'm trying to trade for Jacoby Myers. He has averaged a 29% target share per game rate without Devontae Adams this year. And then, oh, shit, I forgot to look this up. But, hey, with I, I went back and I checked out um, with oh, with AOC. He's got seven touchdowns in 13 games, Jason. So I actually like that. 55 receptions, 620 yards. So he has put up a lot of touchdowns with AOC. I went to go see what it was, what it was with Minshew, but I ended up working a lot today. Uh, but, yeah, anyways, dude. He's got a amazing. He's got an amazing schedule coming up, coming up. But he's got Kansas City this week, so you can either try to trade for him this week because Kansas City's been giving up some points, or you can wait a week if you believe that Kansas City's going to shut him down and then try to get him cheap next week. But he's still going to get a ton of targets. I'm telling you, man. Uh, so Kansas City this week, and then he gets Tampa Bay, Atlanta, Jacksonville, New Orleans, man. So Kansas City, and then you're telling me I get Jacksonville, Atlanta, and or uh, Tampa Bay, Atlanta, and then Jacksonville. Holy shit! So yeah, dude, Jacoby Myers. Pretty much, I mean, the first two weeks of playoffs, and he gets New Orleans, I think, um, weeks in the in the championship. But, dude, you are set. If you could trade for Jacoby Myers, man, he's going to be a wide receiver one, like, three of those weeks. Um, last time when they put it against Kansas City, he had six receptions on seven targets, 52 yards, and a touchdown for 17 points. Thank you, Jason. Um, so, at least he got that touchdown. But if he doesn't get that touchdown, full PP, or in standard leagues, you're fucked. Uh, but yeah, dude, I would still be trying to get Jacoby Meyer if I could right now, because that schedule is sweet. So what okay, do I have to give up, Jason, for uh, so for me some Jacoby? Josh Downs. Oh yeah, yeah. send off Josh Downs plus a little a little something on the side. Oh, something on the side, like Raheem Bucky Mostert. Irving. That's what I did. What about Bucky what? Irving? No, this is uh my next trade for Jason, but I think that's a fair trade depending on what you need. If I needed a wide receiver, I'd definitely do that trade. If I needed a running back, I'd definitely do that trade. I think that's a fair trade, and they're both going to be really play uh, very well for the rest of the season. And then what about Aaron Jones? Um, Damn, dude. Aaron Jones is a tough one because he, he is so inconsistent. I think I'd rather have Jacoby Myers right now. Okay. Even though the scarcity of running back is my – scarcity of running back is what's scaring me there. I, I, it depends. Uh, anyways, hey, dude. Trade four? Bucky Irving, Jason. He outsnapped Rashad White against the Giants, marking the first time that's happened this season when they're both healthy. First time, all right? So he's actually becoming the number one running back, and that's a big deal because they got Mike Evans back. So they're, they're maybe like, hey, we don't need Rashad White out there as much. We need the better runner. He also ran 20 routes, dude, to White's 11 per PFF. Running back three this week, running back seven last week. You're going to have to pay up to get him. Uh, but at the same time, Jason, Bucky Irving owners don't look at him as a top 10 running back. I think they look at him as a maybe a low end number two, a good, really good flex option sometimes. Uh, he was a top he was top twenty for about a month before that, so he's been a running back two, Jason, for what a month and a half. It's pretty awesome. So ever since Godwin's been gone, uh, he did have a terrible game against Kansas City. I should say that he was like in the forties, running back forty. But man, looking at his schedule coming up, he gets to play Carolina twice with a side of Dallas over the next five weeks. So three of the next five weeks amazing matchups for running backs dude so he's going to be a running back one ish for three of the next five weeks so if you can trade up for uh bucky irving i would 
Yeah, the one thing bad that happened last week is that he got to the one yard line twice. All right. That sucks. Yeah. Ran, could, what happened there? What happened at the one yard line? Dude, they got to the one yard line and then they put in that big defense alignment that you like. Redhead? No, 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 man. Oh, my God. That big. Worse? Oh, defense. No. Vita Vea. Yeah. Vita Vea. They put, absolute... him, they put him as a fullback, and then they brought in on uh, Sean Tucker to finish up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then Sean Tucker also fumbled on the on one of the two tries. So There you go. He's going to lose uh, it to Irving. All right, Jason, who do I need to give up to get me some Irving? Uh, James Cook. No. <laughs> Um, what about Zay Flowers? <laughs> so I'm keeping Cook. I'd rather have Zay Flowers, Jason, over Bucky Irving still. And then what about Jacoby Myers? And that's a tough one, man. I think I'd rather have Jacoby, but I could see where it'd be a fair trade both ways. But one's the, the clear cut number one with a shitty quarterback. The other one's in a pretty awesome offense, um, but he's kind of got that weird not not a clear number one. So I think it's a fair trade. I think depending on what I needed, I think that's just fair. Um, all right, Jason, next up, this guy changed my mind. I was telling you to not start him, all right? He had the worst slot cornerback matchup pretty much in the league last week. JSN, man. Jackson Smith and Jigba. He's seen a target share of 38, 36, 25% over his last three. Dude, he was a wide receiver one a couple weeks ago, and now, you know, one overall. Tyler Lockett's not doing shit. Hasn't top 12% target share since week seven. Top 13 finished in each of those weeks with the wide receiver one in there. Yeah, so two terrible matchups coming up against the Jets. And then he gets Arizona, but he just killed Arizona. So those are the two terrible matchups. Everything else is pretty easy. And I'm looking at Jackson Smith and Jigba. He is the slot machine, man, of, I mean, it's it's almost like Cooper Cup. So if, just think of him as Cooper Cup almost. Trade for him like you would Cooper Cup because that's who he's going to be mirroring for the rest of the season probably. Yeah. Uh, damn, I just had I had some pretty good ones here. Oh, uh, Malik Neighbors. I'd rather have JSN, dude. It's crazy. Uh, Dewan Jennings. I'd rather have JSN because, dude, this whole Brock Purdy thing is not. I'd rather have. <laughs> I'd rather... I need to know if Brock Purdy's okay. I, I'm going to say Juwan Jennings because when John Jennings is there, he's amazing. He's going to be. He's like everything to that team. So I'm keeping Jawan Jennings. And then last, would you do Tyron Chasey? Yeah, I would, because Tyron Chasey's pissing me off, man. Pissing me off. He gets these great matchups. This team is terrible. This team is terrible. Tommy Cuts, bull, whatever the fuck his name is, dude. Cold Cuts, terrible. DeVito, mm-hmm. terrible. Terrible. So, yeah, I would try to get out of that. Uh, but, yeah, JSN, dude. He, uh, I'm not, I don't care about bad matchups with him anymore. Now the slot cornerback, I can't Michael Carter or something like that for the jets. He's le- he's legit, legit. So that does scare me a little bit, but that's only one matchup. And then, uh, Jason next up, TJ Arkansas, man had a season high 28% target share week 12 and his route participation rate was 84%. Nine targets in two of the four games played this year. Tight end five finishes in those games. Dude, I'm telling you pretty soon. He's just going to be the tight. He's just gonna be a tight end five play every single week, man. So if you are desperate for tight end, package up some weird shit, Kate Otten, I don't care, and uh, try to get Hawkinson. Uh, would you do Jalen Waddle? Yes. We'll talk about that in a minute. Would you do uh, Mike Evans, TJ T. Hawkinson for Cooper Cup? No. I'd rather have Hawk and, and Evans. And then Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, yeah, I'd rather have Hawkinson over Pacheco. Pacheco's the best thing to happen to Pacheco, Jason, is Kareem Hunt hasn't done shit in three weeks. It's looked terrible. So Pacheco at least is coming back to that because he was coming back to somebody who's been produ- overproducing. As soon as he, he knew I traded him, and he's like, Tyler, I know you're doing, I know you're having a lot of bad luck, but I'm going to give you this one little gleaming shine of whatever. All right, Jason. Lastly, after watching this game, my last trade for CD Lamb, CD Lamb, dude, had a 38% target share against Washington. He scored 18.6. Uh, and 16.8 PPR points over his last two, both without a touchdown. So he's like a wide receiver one without touchdowns over the last two weeks. Um, and I watched Cooper Rush. He made some good throws, man. So I did not get to watch that first game. I was like, oh, hell, dude, this is just fucked. 
he missed all that. He missed out on that touchdown for with the sun or what, with, or whatever. Then I looked at the schedule, Jason, the giants, Cincinnati, Carolina, Tampa Bay, and then he's got Philadelphia, but still dude, a month of being amazing. And then one bad game. So dude, I was actually thinking people, I mean, you could have got CD lamb for pretty cheap. We were thinking about trading for him, Jason. I don't know. Now I'm convinced to trade for him after watching that last game. Yeah, especially when they have Cooper Rush like throwing the ball as much as he is. Which he, is kind he of did not look bad, man. He was throwing some tight spirals. That guy should have caught that touchdown that he threw. Um. All right, so they got uh. Well, I don't want to do that one. That's that's a little too easy. They have a lot of okay. What about see uh, Derrick Henry? I'd rather have Derrick Henry. <laughs> Kyron Williams. Um, I think I'd still rather have Kyron Williams, but that's, I think that's even, it's saying a lot about CD that I'm thinking about it. Okay. Then what about Jameson Williams, Corton, Cortland Sutton for CD lamb? <laughs> Damn dude. I think I'd rather have Cortland Sutton. That's crazy. So what you have to give up to get CD lamb probably isn't worth it is what I'm seeing right now. Cause even though I'm thinking I want to trade it for CD lamb. I guess people in their mind are still have them as like a fucking top 10 pick, top five pick. So that sucks. Thanks, Jason. And then trading yeah. away. Jalen Waddle, man. My first up, 22% target, uh, 22.5% target share uh, on Sunday. But that was, he hit 40 pass attempts for the first time all season. So he's been getting like, you know, a decent target share ish. But Tua has not been throwing the ball. Tua threw the ball 40 times, man. So, so Waddle had a season high nine targets. He turned that into 28 fantasy points. First time he hit, that's the first time he hit double digit PPR points. I, I think that's bullshit because uh, he had 100 yards in game one. So I don't know what that's saying. Zachariasen, 13% target share with Tua this year heading into this game and went up to 23% this last game. I just want to go over there was a bye and then there was like five weeks since the bye. He was wide receiver 61, wide, wide, wide receiver 39. Wide receiver 46, wide receiver 52, wide receiver 91. And now this motherfucker gets double the target share and is a wide receiver one for one week. I would trade that fool away. And then we look, let's look at his schedule, Jason. Green Bay, that's not great. New York Jets, that's not great. Houston, San Francisco, Cleveland, and then the Jets again. So some of those are kind of, you know, I mean, the Jets are the Jets, but they, they still have Sauce Gardner. It's nothing great, man. And some of these are going to be cold weather games, man. Again, Tua Tunga Viola, 75 degrees and sunny. That's why I started him. I pointed that out a lot on Sunday morning. Pretty soon it's not going to be like that, and he's got some cold weather games coming up, Jason. Yeah, uh, what we got her is Jalen Waddle for Rico Dowd. Dowd. I'd probably try to get Dowd, man. I was actually put, trying to put – I was thinking about putting Dowd on a trade for her. Uh, Jonathan Brooks. I don't think I'd try to trade for Jonathan Brooks right now. All right, and then would you do uh, – I'm trying to see like a uh, – oh, Bucky Irving again. He's been on this trade a lot. Oh, dude, if you can get Bucky Irving uh, for Waddle, do that. Do it Do it now. That's probably a good trade for Jason, actually. And then, uh, hey, man, trade away. I put Kyron Williams on here. He hasn't seen a target in the last two games with Puka and Cooper, uh, and Cooper Cup doing all that. One game of 100 yards this season? That was week five? Jason, running back 16, running back 27. Running back 21, running back 28 over the last month. So what you can get for Kyron Williams, I mean, you could probably package some stuff up and get a top 10 running back. You know what I'm saying? Top five running back. So Kyron, man, fell off a cliff, and now with Puka back, it, he's not even getting targets, dog. So Kyron Williams, trade away for me, Jason, right now. Yeah, we actually thought, well, I thought this was going to be the game that he was going to get uh... – the targets because of how good the secondary for the Eagles is, but that didn't quite work out too. So you're saying maybe package a deal and get a top five running back. What about Khalil Shakur, Kyron Williams for B. John Robinson? Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, dude. I would try to do that in a minute. And Is then <laughs> what about straight up, bro? What about Kyron Williams for Chuba Hubbard? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'd probably still go Kyron, man. I'm not going to go crazy. <laughs> So go Pat Reno for Chuba. Pump the brakes. Chuba just did well against Kansas City, dude. I don't know about that though. I think we kind of talked about this one earlier, but it showed up. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, Calvin Ridley for Kyron 
Kyron Williams. You know what? Now I'd rather have uh, Jonathan Taylor and Calvin Ridley. So that's a good trade away. Then the next up, dude, this guy's been on this list for how fucking long, dude. And just wait till you see his schedule for running backs. Holy shit. DeAndre Swift, man, trade him away. Trade him away. After seeing a 58% running back rushing share in week 11, dude, uh, he had a 87% running back rushing share. Now, that is a little misleading because his, his snap percentage, dude, was still 55%. That's the third lowest all season. It was 50% last year, last week. That was like his lowest all season. So he is still not getting on the field. All right? He's still not doing it. And now, check this out, man. Detroit, San Francisco, Minnesota, Detroit over the next month. There's not a worse running back schedule right now in the league than DeAndre Swift. All right? Trade his ass away now. Trade his ass away now. Uh, yeah, let's do, let's do this pretty quick. DeAndre Swift uh, for Austin Eckler. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd, pro- I'd probably do it, yeah. What about for Mike Evans? Oh, fucking it. <laughs> yeah. What, what about uh, Cortland Sutton? Yeah, if you could do that, man. Oh, my God. If right. only I had DeAndre Swift. Damn it. The next up, dude, trade away, Jason. Oh, am I doing this? No, I'm not going to do that. Jerry Judy. He has uh, his now seen target shares of 25%, 24%, and 22% over his last three games. He's only scored, oh, he scored 14, 26, and 14 PPR in those contests. I think I fucked up, Jason. I put that on the wrong list. Uh, that was supposed to be trade four. <laughs> okay, because I was like, these are kind of crazy stats right now. I was like, why do I have this on this list? Uh, okay, forget Jerry Judy. You know you want to trade for him. Forget him. Boop, 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 beep. Just, next up, Jason, trade away. DeAndre Hopkins, dude. DeAndre Hopkins was fourth on the Chiefs in wide receiver routes run against the Panthers, man. So we already knew he's running on. I was, remember when I was like, dude, this guy was like, didn't he say he's running on two torn MCLs and ACLs in the beginning of the year? And now he's like balling out in his first game with Kansas City. That was it, man. It's like he got... He had, the, he had the adrenaline. He got all the shots from the doctors. That shit's mm. worn off. <laughs> now he's the fourth, Jason, in routes run against the pan. That's just insane to me. I saw that and I was like, if you can try to try to wait G-Hop, I would. Uh, for Jameson Williams? Yes, yes, yes. Christian Watson? Yes. Rashad White? Yeah. So that's, all, that's a good trade away. And then lastly, Jason... Jaden Reed, he saw three targets. I was watching that game because uh, I told somebody not to start Jaden Reed. I was like, dude, come on, don't do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, had, he saw three targets and three catches on the first drive. I was like, oh, fuck. He didn't catch the ball for the rest of the game, man. He's, he has now hit a t- 20% target share in just two games this year. So Jaden Reed, we, people still think he's like a number one wide receiver, man. I would trade him away, package him away, do what you got to do. What about for Dobbins? Yeah, I would trade him away for Dobbins. For Johnny Smith. Yes. And then for James Cook. Um, yeah, yes. Fucking A, dude. So that's that's a good trade away. Man, people aren't valuing James Cook. What the hell's going on around here? All right, man. Yeah. Let's get into that's it for the trade targets. If you got any trade targets, comment down below. Because we want to know what you know. Uh Jason. Let's get yeah. into the crashes, then we'll go into the smashes, and we'll end with some positivity. So, first crash, man. We got Kyler Murray never thrown to MH, MGH, MHJ. Yeah, sorry, got to get to the notes here. Uh, Yeah, Kyler Murray finished with 10 points. 24 for 37, 285 yards with one interception. He only had nine yards rushing. His play was average, though. You know, it's like it, it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was just average. 64 completion percentage. His attendant air yards average was eight. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty average. Um, Damn, I thought I just had breaking news, but I didn't. And then yeah. uh, oh, but he, dude, it says why Aaron Rodgers can't return to the Jets next season. So I was like, oh, snap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, like he just he, he didn't throw any touchdowns. The Cardinals' drives, they just kept stalling. They were 3-for-12 on third down, while Seattle was 7-for-14 on third down. So, But what really hurts the most is that he didn't get a single point from rushing, and that's kind of the reason why you drafted Kyler Murray to begin with was because of his rushing. 
Uh, next week, he's at Minnesota, who allows 15 points to uh, opposing quarterbacks. Yeah, so I don't really have anything written down for Kyler Murray, Jason. He's like the one of the only players I didn't really see much about. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've been talking about how long rushing touchdowns and rushing in general has been kind of saving his games as of late. And when he yeah. doesn't get it, dude, he is not really a start-worthy quarterback. But the funny thing is, if I would have had Kyler Murray this week, I still would have probably started him over like maybe Tua or you know some of my other options, and I would have been burned. So he did even worse than I thought. And, uh, yeah, his floor this this season just seems to be really low. Even the ceiling is really high and everything in between. Uh, Jason, next yeah. up, though, this sucks. All right, this guy. Talk about inconsistent. Like, just when you write this guy for dead, he'll get you 20 points, and then you write him off for dead for another three weeks. Ramondre Stevenson, dude. Yeah, PFF actually had this guy to ice out, and I was like, you know, saying on the episode, I was like, this. I feel like this might be a reach. Because he's got a pretty sweet matchup, and he gets the ball, you know, 40 fucking times a game. But he was 8 for 13 with zero touchdowns, 1.6 yards per carry. He had zero recept- uh, receptions on two targets. I'm sitting here. I put in the notes, Tyler, what the hell happened? Three out of the last four games, he's had 20 carries. Back-to-back games with 20 carries and 70 yards rushing. He has been inefficient, but he's getting a lot of work. And he's getting goal line touches. Then he puts up three points versus a team who allows 24 points to running backs. Last time they played, he scored 18 points. So PFF did say to avoid Stevenson. I thought it was a reach, but I guess the Dolphins run defense has improved, I guess, over the last or over the, you know, since Tua came back, basically. Um, Next week, Stevenson is home versus the Colts who allow the 10th most points to running backs. Stevenson, I mean, I don't think he does well in blowouts, you know. I mean, he was outsnapped by uh, Antonio Gibson, who's their pass-catching running back, I guess, 30-29, to 29, and he ran three more routes. Um, Gibson did. So, yeah, just um, I think it's – they need to be in the game, dude. And the Gerard Mayo's ass went out there and was like, hey, man, I can only coach them up so much. Once they get in between the lines, I can't control how bad they are. You know, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> he's crazy. Such a crazy coach. This Rod, man, I heard that on the radio. I was like, dude, you you played for Bill Belichick and you're saying this shit into a microphone. I know. Man. Uh, whatever. So yeah, not great there. And hey, Drake May, Jason, I I did not start him this week. I thought it was a bad matchup, but a lot of people saw him as a good streamer this week, man. And I was like, dude, that fuck sucked. Ah, uh, I was so happy when I was like, I started Tua and I did not start Drake May, and they were playing against each other, and I was like, oh my god, dude, just think of the difference. But anyways. Jason, next up, this is, oh, terrible for me. I started this fool, and I got more points from DJ Moore across the street. This guy got me as many points as, like, fucking Cedric Tillman, all right, in the fucking snow game. Justin Jefferson got shadowed by, of course, Jason, Jalen Johnson, the best goddamn cornerback in the league. And, uh, yeah, what, like two two receptions or some crazy shit? Yeah, two receptions. He finished with four points. Yeah, two receptions. For 27 yards, zero touchdowns on five targets, 40% catch rate. He was third in targets on the team. Jordan Addison and TJ Hawkinson stole everything. Uh, Jefferson had a 29% of the team air yards, an average 12 intended yards uh, per attempt. But, you know, like you just said, Tyler, um, Jalen Johnson had a big part of the Jefferson's uh, down game this week. And uh, why are they going to force the ball to him when Addison and Hawkinson both had over 100 receiving yards? Like, they, this was also probably part of the game strip. You know, they're like, hey, let him do his thing. We got Jordan Addison and Hawkinson who's going to kill it. And they did. Um, this will be Jefferson's lowest points outcome of the year. Next week, they are home versus the Cardinals, who allow 15 points to wide receivers. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure, Jason, they play the Chicago Bears again in the playoffs, in the, in the, in the fantasy playoffs. And watching that, I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. So, yeah, if you're an Addison owner, uh, mark that on your calendar for the playoffs. Yeah. It's probably going to happen again. But, yeah, he had a 15.6% target share on Sunday. It's his lowest of the season. Over the last three weeks, dude, 9.8, 14.1, and 4.7 PPR points. Dude, before that stretch, it was like 20 PPR points a game. So, over the last three weeks, man, he's been terrible for my team. Does not help at all uh, when you have him. (laughs) Yeah, you know, anyways, dude. And well, I'd say DJ Moore, but DJ Moore's actually been pretty good. So yeah. Not great, Jason, for JJ owners this week this year, especially when you see fucking Jamar Chase, people just 
you know, Jamar Chase winning you weeks. JJ has not done that at all this year. Just he he was consistent. Now he's kind of a, a flex option. Do you feel so, like it's like him, Sam Darnold, the system? It's uh, Darishaw, dude. It's a left tackle. So ever since Darishaw went out, maybe he had one good game, and that's it. Uh, and the the touchdown to interception, they they have like, dude, the touchdown rate was so much higher with Darishaw as well. It just fucked. So it's not going to get any better, dude. And then here we go. Would I trade away JJ? No, because I, I don't know. Maybe I would. I, I'd have to think about it. Otten Jason is the last one for us. Kate Otten now with the Mike Evans back. Does that coincide, dude? Is that a coincidence? Yeah, he had four points. He only had one reception for thirty yards, zero touchdowns on three targets. He was actually fourth on the team in targets. Uh, you said it. Mike Evans is back. The running game was on point. And, you know, they played with the lead majority of the game, and the Giants ranked 31st in tight end scoring. So the script just wasn't there for Kate Otten. But I ain't scared, man. I ain't scared. Next week at Carolina. Yeah. Next week at Carolina, that's who he plays, uh, who allows the most points to tight ends. He's a candidate for a bounce back week next week. Carolina's number one. Las Vegas, number two. As far as points allowed. Mosquito, number three. All right, Jason. Um, but yeah, Kate Otten, man, what, he had a 28% target share without uh, Mike Evans this year and 15.9% uh, with him. But, hey, he's just not going to be that top, tippy-top tier. He's going to be um, – he's still going to be a top five tight end, though, probably. You know, he's going to be he's gonna be in that number four, number five. I was rating him – I was ranking him, like, number one a lot of weeks, Jason. That is not going to be the case so much anymore. But still an amazing tight end. Should be starting for you every week. And then Jason, first smash. Jason, I know this sucks, but hey, dude, you said it was a gamble of the week. The weather was 75 and sunny. It was the best weather of the whole entire week. Tua Tonga Viola, man. Yeah, he finished with 28 points, 29 uh, completions on 40 attempts, four touchdowns with 317 yards passing, 17, 7, 72 completion percentage, 1.6 above expectation. He shredded. The Patriots secondary, his attended air yards, which was crazy, was a 5.6. That's second lowest of the week. He had 12 attempts behind the line of scrimmage, and two of them went for touchdowns, and six attempts within five yards. So he goes, uh, short pass, short pass, medium. Short pass, short pass, medium. The Dolphins were playing chess while the Patriots were playing checkers on defense. It just, they, they were doing whatever they wanted on the team, and the Patriots defense was falling for it. It looked like the Dolphins from the previous years. And Tua has seven touchdowns in the last two games. Both were home games. Next week, they're at Green Bay, who allowed 23 points to... Oh, shit. I looked at the wrong one. Ah. <laughs> I put it. They allowed 23 points to running backs. Um, Are they at Green Bay next? Yeah, they're at Green Bay on uh, Thanksgiving. And if I just look real quick right here... We have my... Green Bay is ranked 26, allowing 14 points to uh, quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, do Green Bay, the Jets, Houston, San Francisco, I mean, he, like he's, he's got a bad schedule coming up and a lot of cold-weather teams. Now, Houston is his only, maybe San Francisco, but that might be bad weather. But he's fine with He's fine in San Francisco. But all the other games, man, he will play the Jets at home one of these games. But, yeah, I'm not liking it, dude. I'm not liking the Tua. So, Jason. I got 30 points from like James Winston last week. I got 30 points from two of this last, this this week. I was just I, I was just complaining about how I need to draft a quarterback early. Fuck quarterbacks, man. I don't need them. All right, I'll just stream them every week. <laughs> nice. It's nice when it works out. But you know, then you stream Drake May and get like you know 10 points. You're like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> Next up, Jason Saquon Barkley, dude. So yeah, I mean, what haven't you heard about Saquon Barkley today on the radio on the TV? Everybody loves Saquon Barkley. <laughs> For real, and there was actually some other candidates like uh, Bucky Irving and uh, Josh Jacobs. You know, he had three touchdowns. But Saquon Barkley, bro, he had to do it. The dude finished with 48 points, 26 attempts, 255 yards, two touchdowns with a 9.8 yards per carry. Touchdowns were 70 and 72 yards long. He was uh, He has the number one and the third fastest speed for the ball carrier in Week 12. His fastest speed was 21.91 miles per hour. The kid still got it, Tyler. He still got it. In the passing game, he was four receptions, 47 yards on four targets. He was second in team receiving um, with Devontae Smith out. He saw eight men in the box 27% of the time and averaged 3.64 yards 
rushing yards over expected per attempt. That's the second highest this weekend, dude. That is Superman numbers for your running back. He set the single game rushing record for the Eagles. Next week, he's at Baltimore, who's ranked 24th in running back scoring. Yeah, Jason, and uh, all I'm going to say about this, all right, is uh, you and I both freaked out when he went to the um, – there was two people we freaked out over. We freaked out about Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles, and we freaked out about Derrick Henry going to the Baltimore. And I think you and I both had Saquon ranked number two in our running backs behind Christian McCaffrey to begin the season. No, that was, and, all, uh, that was all you. That was uh, good. I, I'm fucking nuts. And, same, and I, think, I think number three was Derrick Henry. <laughs> I was like, dude uh, – but yeah, people did not. They're like, oh man, we knew this. It's like, dude, no, you, man, man Saquon Barkley, the Eagles was like the biggest fucking deal, man. Anyways, yeah. Jason, um, I was I was really afraid of the tush push, and like I still kind of am, oh. but dude, that and dude, look, and, it, and it's and it's happening. Literally, he's stealing. Yeah. He's getting. Go, he should have so many touchdowns, but he doesn't. Mm-hmm. It is, but it doesn't matter. That's what we didn't factor in as well. We're like, fucking, who cares, man? Yeah. All right. Yep. Hey, my, my dog's barking at me because he's horny for this other dog. <laughs> I say that. He's barking at me. What am I going to do for you, man? I can't, yeah. I can't fix that. <laughs> That's he terrible. likes your hair. No, just he wants this other dog. Anyways, <laughs> man, Sutton. Corlin Sutton is the next one, Jason. And, hey, this is a guy. I Remember, we talked about this. I was, I was all about two wide receivers, veteran wide receivers, I was like, you got to get Christian Kirk. You got to get Cortland Sutton. And I really, and I pushed Kirk, Christian Kirk harder like an asshole, Jason. Yeah, well, I mean, things were different also in the beginning of the season, too. It took a while for the Bo Nix and Cortland Sutton to get going, but uh, he finished with 39 points, eight receptions, 97 yards, two touchdowns on 10 targets. He led the team in targets, reception, yards, and touchdowns. His attendant air yards was 11.4, so he's getting targeted after 10 yards, so that's good for your wide receiver. It was a tell two halves. The first half that what, – what are we saying his name was? Devon Vele? Vele? You should tr- try the veal. The veal? Uh, it's him from some movie. It's like a code. So what's the code? He's like, the veal is on the menu. Or something about the veal. Wait, wasn't that um, – Is it the October, office? O- October – beer fest? <laughs> When he like he no I don't know I can't God why do I remember that from Beer Fest? It's uh, just, I could I should try. Anyway, uh, the veal Vele, whatever <laughs> he was taking all the targets in the first half, but the second half, when trailing, Bonix hyper focused Sutton. Three out of the last five games, he's had ten or more targets. He's the only wide receiver to score multiple touchdowns this weekend. Next, he is home versus Cleveland, who allow the eighth most points to wide receivers. I'm all like, check. I'm all, are you googling yeah, it? That's so I'm funny. All trying, I'm all trying to look up veal. I'm like, where's this shit from? Um, but yeah, dude. So Corlin Sutton, his target shares over the last four games, you know, thirty percent pretty much. So yeah, he's been amazing. Jason, last up, Trey McBride. All right. So he's been on and off depending on how Kyler Murray is, but he's been probably the most consistent player, even more consistent than damn James Connor. So trade me Brad Jason last match. Yeah. 12 receptions, 133 yards, zero, zero touchdowns again, though. He's not, he's not scoring the touchdowns on 15 targets. He led the team in targets. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Was second in targets with six. Um, his targeted air yards was five, which is normal for him. He makes a catch, then turns around and gets five or six yards uh, after the catch. He has 80 targets on the year, which is top three. I believe he's Murray's favorite pass catcher. And and in games where the defense has good cornerbacks, well, the bride will benefit. And he's done that multiple times this season. Next week, they're at Minnesota, who are ranked 24th in tight end scoring. So a little bit tougher matchup with him. But, Tyler, I do believe he's matchup proof. Yeah, um, McBride, I mean, yeah, because he's the main target. If you're tied in, it's like Brock Bowers. I mean, now I, did, I didn't like uh, Denver because Denver because it was a divisional game. If Denver was a non-divisional, because divisional games scare me when it's like amazing defenses. That's my only time I ever kind of like factor out maybe some tight ends I get stuff. Well, Tyler, uh, you're in luck I, because it would not be. You, you're in luck because it wouldn't be a, a divisional game. I'm thinking like McBride versus like the 49ers. I would like to see, I need to go back and see how he's done against them. Like a good defensive team in division against yeah. tight ends. 
for Ed uh, Moore. Yeah, I do want to say Marvin Harrison Jr. hit 30% target shares in two of his first three games of the season. He has not been close to that since. So Marvin Harrison Jr., man, probably one of my biggest whiffs this season, man. I thought I thought for sure he was going to be better. Uh, and I would have, I, we all thought Malik Neighbors was really no rookie wide receivers are blowing our, you know, blowing us away this year. Yeah, Malik Neighbors had a chance there for a bit and then really just died off. And Marvin Harrison Jr., he's just, He's not connecting with Kyler Murray. There's just so something kind of going an outlier on year, Jason, as far as like uh, top in. And these are two of the best wide receivers that come out in a long time. So yep. that's what's kind of weird about that. Anyways, everybody, everybody, that is the show. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any crashes or smashes you want to tell us about, please comment down below. Trade targets, man. Comment down below. All right. Hey, we got some shows coming up. Uh, but hey, if you don't mind giving us a thumbs up, only if you really like the show, that does send us out to more people. That's exactly what we need. So hopefully we earn that thumbs up. Hopefully we earned a subscription, man. We need subscribers. Please, please just help us out a little bit. Uh, hey, Jason, we got some shows coming out. Please send us out. Yeah, so after this show, the next day after, you're going to have Tyler's famous wide receiver cornerback cheat sheet. It is w truly one of a million. Make sure to watch it so you know who to play on your own fantasy roster. Then the day after that, Thursday, we got our own Start or sit, play or pause. Make sure to check that out. If you have any questions, make sure to let us know in the comments. I would talk to you guys in those videos, or in the play or pause video at least. Deuces. This is the Fantasy Red Zone, and we appreciate 